So the last time I made a video about video rendering output and how long it takes, it was based on the Intel Arc A770 GPU. So now I don't exactly have the reference model of the Arc GPU, but what I do have is one of the vendor produced units. It's still an A770 chip, but it's the eight gigabyte unit made by ASRock. Um, it's this unit right here, the 8 gigabyte Phantom Gaming. It's, it's been overclocked, right? So one thing I learned is that the base clock is 2200 for it, but it will go up to 2400 as its boost clock. And the interesting thing is compared to like a regular old CPU, which boost clocks are really only transient and under full load, you would be more... Um, at a lower clock, the full 2400 clock is actually under full load. So if we look at this guy right now, right, I've got OBS running for streaming, and so OBS is sucking down about 23% of the GPU. Not a whole lot of CPU being used because what I'm using with OBS is the AV1 codec. So you can see here under video decode that uh, quite a bit, about 20%. A little bit more um, of the GPUs being used for the streaming operation. Now, if we look at Intel Arc, which is the companion software to the Arc A770 GPU, you'll notice that even with OBS on, the GPU clock's only at 600 megahertz. That's the idle GPU, pretty much, right? That's the idle frequency. Um, you can show that the render frequency is showing up around 17%, media activities 26%. So, you know, in general, that's what's going on here with this CPU. What I've done now is I've queued up this 10 minute 4K file for a render output. And I'm rendering it out at 4K. The source video is 4K. I don't, I don't know why it doesn't show up in 4K. But, um, I've got it queued up in different, in two different formats, MP4 or, so I've got this now in two different formats. I've got QuickTime and MP4. So one of the comments in the previous video pointed out to me, hey, why don't you test AV1? Well, I was only doing QuickTime outputs and QuickTime doesn't have an AV1 output and AV1 is kind of what makes this graphics card unique. Um, and what we want to see is how much processor, central processor, is it using versus GPU on these different formats, right? And we'll look at the different file sizes, too, once these guys are done. So when we look here, QuickTime, we're going to be able to output an MPEG. We're also going to be able to output an H.264 and an H.265. Now, in MP4, we're going to be able to output an AV1. H.264 and an H.265. Uh, so we'll see what those file sizes look like and how much, uh, what kind of effect it has on hardware. So QuickTime MPEG is about one of the oldest formats out there. And what we can see is the CPU has gone from, you know, pretty much baseline doing nothing to somewhere around 61% CPU utilization, right? And our GPU has gone from 23% baseline up to 52%. So in, in this old MPEG format, it, it's kind of a balance of using CPU and GPU. And the CPU we have is 16 core 3950X. So it, it's no slouch, right? 16 cores. I mean, we can see this in terms of logical processors, just 32 threads is what this is operating. So now under the classic MPEG, when you look at the GPU clock. The GPU clock is at 2400 megahertz, right? It's kind of at the top of its GPU clock. So the GPU clock's not only at a high frequency, 56% of its RAM's being used at this point. So now using QuickTime's H.264 format, you can see that in terms of GPU clock, the GPU clock's at 2400, just like uh, it was previously when using it with the MPEG format. But what's interesting is with QuickTime, it's actually using less GPU than it was with MPEG. So H.264 in QuickTime is using less GPU and 
about maybe a little bit more on CPU than it did previously. So, you know, um, that's really good to understand so that if you have a system that maybe isn't capable, then you got to choose your format to fit your hardware, basically. So now we're going to render an H.265 file here. So now looking at the H.265 file, it's interesting. It's using about the same amount of processor as H.264 in a QuickTime format, you know, which is commonly known as .mov. It's interesting. It's using about the same amount of CPU. Same thing again with GPU usage. So H.265 is, I guess, close to H.264, interestingly. Same amount of, G of CPU utilization. Maybe actually a little bit less. Not very much GPU utilization because the baseline's 23% and that's kind of where we're at. So in a QuickTime format, H.264 and H.265 are actually both pretty CPU intensive. Not very heavy on GPU at all. It does bring the GPU clock up quite a bit though. So GPU clock is all the way up at the top, 2400. Now that we're done with the QuickTime files, I'm going to render out the MP4 files, starting with AV1. So now you can see clearly that the A770 GPU is built for AV1 decoding. And you can tell because the GPU is at 100% utilization in video decode and copy operations or whatever it is that they're calling it. CPU, it's still using CPU, so don't go skimping on the CPU. It's still using about 41% of a 16 core 32 thread CPU. Let's see what it looks like when it's logical processors. So it looks like one CCD is being used quite a bit more than the other. But AV1 is really truly built for being processed on hardware like the Intel Arc. Even with the streaming software going on in OBS and AV1, the GPU clock wasn't getting forced to hit boost. Uh, now it's cycling. It's cycling between 20, 13, 15, 2400 megahertz, 112 watts it says it's using because the GPU is at 100%. So now we're going to render MP4 in an H.264 format, see what it does to the hardware. In H.264 format, you can see that we're back to our usual scheme here, where CPU utilization is somewhere around 70%, GPU utilization is back down to baseline. So now we're going to render out the H.265. So the MP4 H.265 also finds the boost clock. and Interestingly, in an MP4, it's tagging the ARC GPU to 100% with 25% CPU usage. This so will have to look at what the file size looks like here in a little bit. But looks like QuickTime's MP4, I'm sorry, so it looks like QuickTime's H.265 is a different animal from MP4's H.265. That's really kind of bizarre. I mean, look at that. 100% GPU on MP4's version of H.265. So MP4, a little bit more GPU-centric in terms of processing than is QuickTime. So now let's compare the outputted files, okay? Every one of these outputs is 10 minutes and 23 seconds at 4K. Let's start with the QuickTime MPEGs. QuickTime MPEG is a 4.59 gigabyte file and took 3 minutes 9 seconds to render. If you're doing QuickTime, MPEG is actually not that bad. And as long as the compression looks good in 4K, that's really not that bad. Now, now when we look at the H.264 file for QuickTime, the H.264 file is 9.35 gig. It's a pretty chunky file size to have to upload. To YouTube or wherever you're gonna output that to. And it took 10 minutes 52 seconds to render compared to three minutes on the MPEG version. Now QuickTime's H.265 is also a 9.3 gigabyte file and similarly took about the same amount of time in QuickTime. 
So I'm, I'm thinking QuickTime is not really that optimized for H.265. The real kind of eye opener here, card that can do AV1 is just worth it in time saved and in file size saved if, if you got stuff you got to upload. AV1 in an MP4 took three minutes to render, 100% GPU, 589 megabytes. That's pretty small. The H.264 version still took 10 minutes to render. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 47 seconds actually, closer to 11 minutes is a 9.35 gigabyte file. So it's a big file. The real interesting thing is the MP4 H.265 took five minutes to render and is only a 5.9 gigabyte file. Yes, it's smaller, but MP4's implementation of H.265 is just more efficient than QuickTimes. But absolutely nothing beats AV1, nothing. I'd rather upload a 589 megabyte file or stream using AV1 than using H.264. So in summary, thanks for watching. The Intel Arc A770 from Azrox Phantom Gaming is a great GPU and is able to utilize the technology that's in the A770, especially with AV1 and for those of us that use DaVinci Resolve for editing. See you next time.